All right, coming in at number 10 now, we have Joshua Rules. In 2015, a man took his brother along with him to go house hunting in Michigan when they stumbled across a dirty, wet, and unfinished basement. They saw writing on the wall, and when they took a closer look, they realized that a child used to live down there. One wall read Josh's Rules. Number one, stop reading your walls. Number two, no watching Isaiah through the hole. And number three, no writing or drawing on the walls. Number four, if you don't like these rules, go to number zero. Other messages said things like, don't climb into my room, or, and I think this one is the creepiest, stop watching me. The man posted all of these pictures to Reddit, where users came up with their theories, ranging from schizophrenia to the supernatural. Very strange stuff either way. Next up at number nine now, we have Satan. In 2015, Imja user Bushi992 posted these pictures to Imja of the basement and attic in the house that he and his friends had just moved into. As you can see, something went down here. The symbols appear to be satanic in nature. There were pentagrams, rams, snakes, and strange messages on the wall, such as, for I am the earth, and within me the devil burns. Many people asked them why didn't they ask to see the attic and basement before they moved in. I think that's a very good point. I'm not sure if I could sleep knowing this stuff was below me. At number eight now, we have the tape. Reddit user Lumberjack shared pictures of a small basement passageway that he discovered in his new home. Inside it, he found a locked door, which concealed an entrance to a small room. Inside that room was a briefcase and a safe. He opened that and found some money, a few watches, and videotapes. The tapes had writing on the front of them. One of them simply read, no, 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 no. He handed everything over to the police for investigation. Would you guys have done the same, or would you have ignored the message and watched the tape? I'm not sure if I could have. Okay, next up at number seven now, we have the tombstone. In 2016, a student from Massachusetts made a grim discovery in their university house basement, a grave. Derek Crook was interviewed about the tombstone next to the boiler in his home. The message on it says, this marks the burial site of Jabez Harden, who served in the War of 1812. Now, he died in 1879, at the age of 83. At first, the housemates were very creeped out by this find, but now James actually quite enjoys shocking visitors to the house by randomly announcing, there's a grave in the basement. Maybe that's just his coping mechanism. Next up, at number six, we have graffiti. In 2012, Reddit user Tallest Waldo shared a creepy discovery he found in his basement. This writing, accompanied by some very strange symbols. Another Reddit user identified the symbols as being part of occult spellcasting. They suggested this basement used to be a cult member's ritual workspace. After meditating on the symbols for a while, it seems they had an epiphany and wrote the message that we can now see on the wall. I can kind of make out something about their soul being fire, and the time has come to use the gateway they have opened. What do you guys think it says? I'm not even sure if I want to know. At number five now, guys, we have Peter Pan. In 2010, a woman in LA found something very disturbing in her basement. Wrapped in newspapers from the 1930s were the mummified remains of two newborn infants. They were wrapped up with a copy of Peter Pan and a membership card to the Peter Pan Woodland Club. Detectives identified who did this, a woman called J.M. Barry, who coincidentally had the same name as the author of the book, but was of no relation. What police have never figured out, though, is the purpose of this. What did this symbolize? Was this woman trying to convey a message about her dead newborns and the story of Peter Pan's Never Never Land? We may never know. At the number four spot now, we have mold. In 2005, a family who moved into a new home were decorating one of the rooms when they noticed the bookcase was a little bit loose. They nudged it and it swung open to reveal a secret passageway. Inside, they found a note that read, hello, if you're reading this, then you found the secret room. The letter went on to explain how they were the previous tenant of the house, but had to move out because of mold, which made their children very sick. The new owners who were reading this actually listened to the warning and moved out because of the mold too. They even sued the broker who sold them the house. I'm sure they're happy they got the warning, but I would be a little bit creeped out to find a note that congratulated me for finding the secret room. Very weird stuff. All right, next up at number three now, we have the asylum. Now, not much is known about the picture you're about to see or even 
who took it, but I think that kind of adds to the whole mysterious allure of it. This was the writing found on the basement wall of an abandoned mental asylum. It reads, I never knew much about people until I took one apart just to see how it worked. Many commenters online have speculated who exactly wrote this and if perhaps the story behind this message could lead to the reason the asylum was abandoned in the first place. And finally at number one now we have the bunker. Now for me a bunker is basically a huge creepy basement with nothing above it. It's like a super basement. In 2014 an Imdra user shared a story and pictures from when they visited a friend in northern Germany. In the woods they found an abandoned bunker. They followed the endless hospital like hallways. As they ventured deeper and deeper they found graffiti on the walls with words like die and help. Eventually they came across a huge yellow vault door that had been ripped off its hinges. A worrying sight to see what could have been that powerful. A little further on they found the creepiest writing so far. A message in German that translates to hello Satan I love you. It wasn't long before they just turned back. That clearly isn't a place you want to stick around in for too long. Coming in at number 10 we have a spooky chapel. Um so this is terrifying. In Telford UK Pat and Diane Fowler wondered what was inside a square box seal next to a wall at the bottom level of their house. They opened it up and then they found a metal grill in their floor. Eventually they went below the grill and found a totally eerie stone chamber that looked like an old chapel. It even had had a crucifix on the floor. They then found that there was a staircase leading into a cupboard in another area of the house. Weird. Coming in at number 9 we have mythical creatures. According to YouTube channel Incredible News E3, some strange creatures were found in a basement of a mansion in the UK. Allegedly in the 60s in London, an old mansion belonging to a Thomas Theodore Marilyn was being prepared for demolition. As people were searching and doing a final check, wooden boxes were found in the basement. Now inside these wooden boxes were what looked like alien and fairy carcasses. They now reside in the Maryland Museum. Now the museum does exist but I'm calling fake news all over the findings. I'm sure that they were weird things in the boxes but they to me look a bit like models. At number 7. Hi! No absolutely not put it away. Firstly why does it look like a prison door and secondly what the heck is that family dynamic? That baby is a creep fest. Wait actually they're all kind of creep fests. I don't want to look at them anymore. One redditor wrote it looks like Leatherface got into arts and crafts. Texas Chainsaw Arts and Crafts Massacre. I think that's pretty accurate. Coming in at number 4 of the top 10 insane things found in a basement, we have a stranger. Um, like, hello there, and who are you, and why are you in my basement? This is very much a question that these Ohio State University kids had on their lips when they discovered a secret door in their basement that then led to a secret bedroom in which a mystery man called Jeremy was living in. Jeremy, what are you doing there? The group of lads thought that there was a ghost in the house that opened the oven and the cupboard doors, but it turns out it was Jeremy. This sounds way too good to be true. One museum found that they were sitting on a hidden wine vault and that is coming into number 3. Researchers at New Jersey's Keene University discovered a hidden wine vault in the basement of the Liberty Hall History Museum. There were 50 bottles of wine and other spirits that date back 300 years just like sitting there. The loot included a 1796 case of Madeira. Now this wine is known for its longevity so it probably still tastes good. There was also a whole bunch of Cuban cigars. What a finding. Coming in at number 2 we have NASA secrets. Oh my. In 2015 a dealer was cleaning out a Pittsburgh basement of a deceased IBM engineer who worked for NASA during the space race era. So this was from the late 50s to the mid 70s. They found a whole load of NASA files on two giant computers. 93 of the tapes that they found had data about Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11. Now these were flyby missions to Jupiter and Saturn. How Cool is that? Finally, coming in at number one, this scares me a lot. Somebody found a dozen live sharks in a basement. Um. Officers from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation searched a home in Lagrangeville. The authorities found a homemade pool in the basement filled with seven live sand sharks and a dead hammerhead shark and other smaller sharks. The sharks were caught and taken to the Long Island Aquarium. Seriously though, who keeps sharks in their basement? No. We have some. Samara's death hole. I am talking about the movie The Ring but I will admit that that sounded a bit suspicious. 
Firstly, I want to say that I absolutely love Reddit. Reddit is like an endless source of scary information from real people, so thank you Reddit and thank you humans for contributing. Honestly, I don't know where most amazing top 10 would be without Reddit. So in 2016, Colin Tendo posted on Reddit to say, I have the ring in my basement, and looking at the pictures, it literally looks like they do. They found a well under a trap door under two cement blocks. They lifted up the blocks and hello creepy death hole. Like seriously, who died down there? People on Reddit were freaked out. The post got over 8,000 upvotes. After all of the attention the whole got on Reddit, Colin Tendo gave us an update. They said, A friend told me I should throw a lifelike doll down there to show the kids when they act up. This is what happened when little Johnny wouldn't eat his vegetables. I think that's cruel. He also said, For visibility, it is 8 feet deep, 4 feet filled with water. There is nothing else down there. No holes, no copaland pipes, no gates to hell. It's just a hole with water. Nowhere to explore or Splunk. Still though, creepy hole in the basement. I don't like it. And something about the stone. Creepy. This person who found this hole had a premonition that it even existed long before they found it. Coming in at number 9, we have the railroad hole. This is an insane story. Imagine moving into a home and always having a weird feeling about your property. Alexandra Poulos of Lansdowne, Pennsylvania said she always knew there was something going on in her house that she didn't yet know about. She said she felt a presence. While her basement started breaking, she was very, very stressed, but when it opened up to reveal a massive hole, she was thoroughly creeped out. Long story short, she dug deeper into the hole and found a room 14 feet below. When they dropped a ladder down, they discovered that the room was actually part of an old underground railroad. Now Poulos is investigating the history of the space and making structural repairs. She's convinced that there's a spiritual presence and she wants to know the full story. Are there ghosts of the railroad underneath her house coming out through a hole? What a sentence. Coming in at number 8, we have the sinkhole. In 2013, a man in Norwood, Cincinnati woke up to discover a 40 foot sinkhole in his basement. The hole was 10 feet wide and 40 feet deep. It seems like something had gone pretty wrong, obviously. Sinkhole. Honestly, have a look at it. This is what the homeowner had to say. I mean, everything. Everything I had that was worth value is gone. <laughs> The house ends up being purchased off the owner by the city who tore it down to repair the hole, so I guess it's kind of a silver lining, although they did lose out on their house for a while. Coming in at number 7, we have the Mylux. In 2019, the Ace of Finland posted this scary looking hole on Reddit's urban exploration subreddit. They simply wrote, We found a deep hole filled with water in the basement of an abandoned factory. And, well, I mean, that is a pretty accurate description. This actually looks like a Tomb Raider level filled with harpoon doom. Do you remember when you'd make Lara Croft swim down the spooky holes? Others said it looked like a place that would be full of Maya lurks from Fallout. One commenter wrote, Seems like the beginning of a horror movie. A pair of explorers in the abandoned building stumble upon this flooded basement. Just as they turn around to leave, something grabs them by the ankle. Right? Coming in at number 6, we have this mystery hole. A YouTube video uploaded in December 2011 shows a guy investigating a very strange hole in his basement floor. At first, he shows the hole with the camera, it's covered over, but then he opens it up and pokes the camera down there, and it does look very, very deep indeed. Yeah, so... I guess we'll probably go down there eventually, but I don't know. It's kind of a small hole. So, definitely a bigger person. Like, we never actually get to the bottom of this spooky hole, and I would straight up freak out if this was in my home, because what's down there? Also, would you not worry about this damp open space being underneath your house? Like, I wouldn't structurally feel good about that, let alone the ghosts and ghouls. Coming in at number 5, we have the doorway to the abyss. Four years ago, Gibbersman posted on our creepy on Reddit. They simply wrote, The hole in my basement, and then shared a link to this Imja horror. Can you even imagine? To me, this looks like the lair of the Mothman or something. Some of the comments are reasonably on point. Max Powers 8988 said, Sit in there with no lights on for 30 minutes while you conduct an EVP session. Another commenter said, This is Mr. Buzz Killington. They said, You're that guy in the horror films that would insist that everyone stay together with the lights on and if anything weird happened, you would just pack your bags and get into the car and drive back to Florida instead of wandering into the strange dark places alone. Exactly, I kind of feel what they're saying here. Like, get in the hole or don't post a picture of it. Coming in at number 4, we have this very holy hole. 
Imagine finding a hole in your basement and then discovering it leads to an underground chapel that's been hidden for a hundred years. I mean, I don't feel good about that. People do not have secret underground chapels for good reasons, do they? It's always like secret praying or ritual sacrifice or satanic cults. Here's a picture of Gareth amid the original hole, and here he is in the room at the end of it. Honestly, that crumbling cross on the floor really freaks me out. I don't like it. Coming in at number three, we have the spider hole. Okay, I don't know what I dislike more, spiders or holes, but spiders that live in holes, that really takes the biscuit. With that in mind, this really is one of the most horrifying basements I've ever seen. Posted on R Creepy on Reddit by Uncle Drunky in 2018, they simply wrote the basement of a house I visited today and then they posted this picture. Ah, I mean, can you even imagine? This is one big giant spider hole. I've never seen such thick cobwebbing in my whole life and this is outrageous. Once again, I do love Reddit for the every everyday stories shared and the everyday comments from everyday people who just make really good points. Blake Major said there is a 90% chance a human sized spider is lurking down there. Honestly, I think you're right. Dank Fisherman said, but you might get some epic loot for defeating it. That's true, but still, it wouldn't be enough for me. Coming in at number two, who is Isaiah? It really isn't just the hole that is the scary thing in this basement. In 2015, a man and his brother discovered a horrible secret at a basement of an unoccupied home in Michigan. The siblings were house hunting when they entered the basement of a vacant property, only to be greeted with scary messages. Of the worrying scrawl on the walls was a set of creepy rules for somebody by the name of Joshua. They read 1. Stop reading your walls. 2. No watching Isaiah through the hole. 3. No writing or drawing on the walls. 4. If you don't like these rules, go to number 0. That isn't a number 0 though, but really that isn't the point. For me, the worrying thing is wrapped up in number 2. No watching Isaiah through the hole. I mean, hello creepy. It isn't clear which hole this is talking about, but there is a peephole, some kind of a bunch of peepholes drilled in the staircase, so maybe he was watching Isaiah through there. Also written on the walls was stop watching me, so I've just about had enough of this creepy basement and the creepy holes. Starting us off at number 10 is the underground city. I would be so chuffed if I found an underground city in my basement or like what great value for money. Real estate is steep these days you guys. Underground city, we need that. Anyway, in Turkey back in 1963, a homeowner knocked down a wall in his basement to find a hidden room. And then another, and then another, and then a whole network of tunnels. AKA what turned into Derenkuyu, one of the most impressive archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. Derenkuyu is an ancient multi-level underground proper city that could accommodate about 20,000 people and had a bunch of amenities too, like stables, cellars, chapels livestock and even running water from an underground river. It's believed the underground city was used by Christians as protection during the Arab Byzantine wars. It had about 8 levels and damn what a find this is. Like honestly like kudos to whoever the hell found that. Kudos to you. You probably sold that for like a billion dollars. Probably more. I hope you're enjoying your life on an island somewhere in the Caribbean. I wish I was you. Coming in at number 9 is The Box. Lorne Kaplan found the company Free Home Cleanup, which offers free home cleanout services for hoarders. During one case of major hoarding, he was cleaning out the basement workroom of a farmhouse built sometime in the 1800s, located in Hartsdale, New York. As he was cleaning, Lorne found a bunch of cans, cans of paint, of stain, spackle, and so forth, but one can stood out to him. Inside one of the cans, he found the ashes of a deceased family pet. Like, I know people keep their relatives ashes but I didn't know cremating and keeping your pet's ashes was a thing. But the worst part was the ashes weren't even the current owners so whose pet's ashes were they? How long had they been there for? Was it a sad situation where the pet died naturally and they just couldn't bear to part with it? Or did they accidentally kill the pet and burn the body so no one would ever find out? Like many things could have happened and I need to know what happened. At number 8 we have the bunnies. Back in December of 2015 in Sorkville, Wisconsin, 29 rabbits were found in the basement of an abandoned run down barn. They were all in cages in horrible conditions and one of them was even found just dead in its cage. Thankfully the Wisconsin Humane Society removed all the rabbits and after being examined it was concluded that all of them had some kind of general or respiratory infection. Almost all of them also had scabs on their bodies and severe hair loss meaning they had been neglected for a while 
while in this dark environment. Sadly, there was little to no hope of finding the person who owned the barn or put the rabbits there because they were long gone by then, but thankfully, all the bunnies became adoptable after intensive caring and healing, so yay. I mean, there's a happily ever after, and thank God, because I was about to slap a because we do not abuse animals, not under my arch, no, no, not ever. Filling our number 7 slot is the renovation. Now, a few years ago, a woman living in Wisconsin decided to renovate her entire home, as you sometimes do. What had been bugging her for ages was the basement, so she decided to start with that first. When contractors came and started digging it up, they made a startling discovery. Hundreds and hundreds of human remains, including children's skulls, were found there, and the one probably wanted to evaporate into the ground at that point. And I mean, fair enough, I would too. Turns out her house was built on top of an old burial ground, and the remains were nearly two centuries old, so thankfully she was in the clear. With that being said, all the renovations had to stop and it took her 15 months to get approval from the State Historical Society before restarting them. Honestly, damn, imagine wanting to renovate your house and then finding a graveyard. Like, how does one even react to that? How, what? I know I'm smiling, but I'm not smiling on the inside. Now at number 6 is the utter snakery and truly honestly you guys the couple in this story got so snaked by life I feel so bad for them. So back in 2009 a couple had just bought a home in Rexburg, Ohio and were super excited about it because yay new house, new life, new chapter, god knows what. But either way their excitement was very short lived. Within the first few weeks they started finding a lot of snakes in their backyard which you just couldn't understand. The area itself barely had any so why were there so many in their yard alone? The couple also started hearing noises from under their floors and inside their walls, so they decided to investigate. They ended up removing a panel of sliding in their basement and were probably hoping to god they spoke parcel tongue when they saw what was inside. Dozens and dozens of snakes just started coming out of their wall and oh, I just, just feel like they're on me. I don't like it. I don't like the feeling. And that's not even the worst bloody part. The couple also had a problem with their water system because it just tasted very oniony when it came out and they came to find out that was from the snakes exuding this musk when they get scared. Well, A, BRB while I gag, and B, their only option was to either live there or spend $100,000 removing the nest, so they filed for bankruptcy and moved the hell out. Can you imagine? That just sucks so bad. Imagine buying a house, finding like a snake labyrinth, and being like, oh, well, guess we're on the streets now. <laughs> coming in at number 9 are the cups. This is another horror story coming from Lorne Kaplan, our resident free home cleanup guru. He agreed to clean out the basement section of an old three story apartment in a fairly run down neighborhood, so already we're expecting the worst here. Either way, he was thrilled to find the basement in pretty good condition, aka there was just not that much trash or litter on the ground, so I mean, the situation was workable. It makes it bearable at least. Anyway, all that excitement went down the bloody drain when he opened the cupboards and found 30 odd teacups filled with dead cockroaches. And it wasn't even that they all accidentally just died and fell into the teacups, like no, the owner was collecting dead cockroaches and storing them in these teacups in the basement. That is disgusting, like I can't bleh, bleh. Like if I was alone and someone wanted me to clean that and never warned me about that, I'd be so pissed, like the disrespect, put some respect on my name, I'm done. I'm not even Lorn Kaplan. <laughs> At number four are the teeth. This is the last one from Lorn on our list, but honestly, thank you for your service, and I'm sorry you had to see any and all of this. Now, with this case, Lorn was in New Jersey cleaning out a home for an elderly woman whose husband had recently died. He was making his way through the house and then finally got to the basement, which was filled with cardboard boxes, which was pretty standard. As he was going through them, he found one that rattled around quite a bit, so he opened it up. Inside, he found dozens and dozens of dentures, loose teeth, Teeth and bridges. First of all, again, BRB while I gag. And secondly, the cherry on top was that they weren't the woman's or her late husband's. So whose freaking teeth were they? Why were they there? Why? Whose are they? When were they dead? Like, were, are they dental records from people who were killed? Like, I need answers. Why is there a box of teeth in this woman's house? Whose teeth are they? Filling our number 3 slot is the doll. Now this one was shared by someone on reddit who said this doll was discovered in the basement of an estate sale. The doll is really not what you'd imagine, it's extremely pale, the face and body is that of an old Asian woman. Which is just weird in and of itself, you don't usually see an old doll at all. On top of that, the expression of the doll is just one of anguish and it's just unsettling. Her teeth aren't all there and her two index fingers were broken off as well. Like at this point I'd really prefer Annabelle over this, like I'm not doing this. She was found in a very tightly 
tightly secured black box that was even tied up, indicating whoever had had her beforehand really wanted the box to remain shut. Now, the user claimed there was a name carved into the back of the doll's neck, and other users started commenting daring the user to say the name into a mirror thrice to see what would happen. I don't know if they ended up doing it or not, but maybe don't listen to trolls on Reddit trying to get you killed. Just, you know, a little word of advice. Now at number 2 is The Lady. Posted by Redditor Robinson217 two years ago, they shared that they used to volunteer with their local police department and one day they found something equally disgusting and really sad. They raided a house that had been suspected to be abandoned for quite a while and that a squatter was now maybe living inside of it. Now they cleared the ground floor and found nothing and so they made their way to the basement. In the basement they found the old lady who had owned the house except she was dead. And not only was she dead, but her little dog had eaten her entire face. Like the skin from her hairline to her jawline to both her ears, like it was all gone. Thankfully, her eyeballs were still in the sockets, but other than that, it was just a skeleton in clothes. Honestly, I would have stopped volunteering at that point. Some things you just can't unsee. I wasn't even there, but I can't unsee that. And finally, at number one is the poem. This was shared by Reddit user Gizmo588, who said they used to live in an old house in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota. But when they first moved in, the user was exploring the house and went into the bedroom in the basement that was going to be theirs. Honestly, I'd be so pissed if my parents moved into a house and I got a bedroom in the basement. Like, no! I deserve better! Either way, in the bedroom they found a hand-painted poem in dark reddy brown paint that said, I wrote a little poem. I wrote it on my wrist. I wrote it with a blade. I wrote it with a twist. Now, if you don't get it by now, the person wrote that poem with his own blood. Turns out the user found out that the previous owner had committed suicide in the backyard of the house by cutting his wrists and before him an elderly couple had died in the house as well. And I'm sure you can imagine that family did not stay in that house very long after that, I assure you. At number 10 we have IT Chapter 1. The scene combines so many creepy things into one explosive freak show. You have a flooded basement to scare anyone who might have a fear of drowning. Then you have the rotted corpse of Georgie and of course the horrifying Pennywise vibrating through the water like a rogue washing machine. And of course the basement is just the cherry on top of this whole thing. Like imagine the same scene was happening in a living room or a kitchen there's like a fireplace going. It just wouldn't be as scary. You need a dark, moldy, wet, creepy basement to really send the horror factor home. Also once you walk down to the basement there's only one way out. So if that creepy clown crawls up to the doorway before you do, then you're gonna end up clown chow. Which is also the name of the Pennywise themed breakfast cereal that I'm going to invent. It'll have marshmallows in it that are shaped like disemboweled kids. At number 9 we have Little Creeps. A girl named Samantha was looking for a place to live in downtown Vancouver. The rent prices were kind of crazy but she was determined to live downtown so she kept digging. She came across a basement apartment that was way cheaper than the rest. So cheap it was a little suspicious but she still wanted to check it out. And it was beautiful. This only made things more suspicious. She looked into reports about the place. Maybe there was black mold, but nothing came up. She decided that she was just lucky, and then she signed the lease and moved in. For the first month, everything was fine. But then she started to get these strange nightmares. She dreamt of a child laughing and running around her bed. But the dreams progressed, and the child would contort and shift into this horrible shape, like all his bones were breaking. And then his eyes would sink into the back of his head until there were black pits. The creature would move closer and closer to her, and she would always wake up in a cold sweat before it touched her. Then one night, in her horrible nightmare, it got close and it bit into her face. She woke up screaming. She had a sharp pain all over her face. She then looked into the mirror and saw black bite marks on her cheek. It was safe to say that she didn't spend another night there. At number 8 we have Tremors. Trevor's was one of my favorite monster movies when I was a kid. It's campy, cheesy, and has all the pieces of a bad movie from the 80s. And I think there's like 8 of these movies. Now laughable as these movies are now, the Tremor creature I always found super creepy. These are giant slug like monsters that can dig underground like moles and they have thermal vision. And they also have those tentacle things that come out of their mouths and they are hideous. There was a time in monster movies where they used real props and they always looked slimy. It was so gross. It was just, ugh, even just thinking about it grosses me out right now. At number 7. 
seven, we have the break-in. Two brothers were home alone late one night and they heard a crash in the basement. They assumed it might have just been something that fell over and they figured they'd wait until the morning before they cleaned it up. Then they heard another crash and it sounded like something was shuffling down there. They lived far into the country, so chances of it being someone breaking in were pretty low. It was most likely an animal. So they decided they would try and trap it and then set it loose. They grabbed a blanket to wrap around it and then a shovel to protect themselves. They walked into the basement expecting to see a raccoon or a possum or something like that, but what they saw was way creepier. They described it as a humanoid body, hairless, with long fingers that were almost like claws, and then looked at them and then they saw its face. Its skin looked like it was pulled over a skull and had teeth that looked like they were filed down into points. It hissed at them and then crawled out through the basement window and then it was gone into the night. They could never prove what they saw that night, but they never, ever forgot. At number six, we have The Haunting of Hill House. If you are looking for a solid horror movie series, then you have to check out The Haunting of Hill House. There are so many little scares in this show that when I watched the recap to make this list, I found even more ghost sightings that I had missed from the first time I watched it. And the basement scene is one of the best parts. Yeah, being stuck underground with a crawling mummy coming towards you when you're 10 years old is one of the worst things I could imagine happening in my life. My sister told me there were monsters under my bed when I was a kid, and it messed me up for like years. I feel this kid's pain. At number five, we have the cage. A family's grandmother passed away and they were left with her house. Instead of selling it, they decided they would keep it, renovate it, and maybe turn it into a nice summer home. They were gutting out the basement when they found a hidden panel. It moved a wall and revealed a secret staircase. This was strange. Not only did the family think they knew their grandmother very well, but the staircase seemed like it had been used recently. They walked down into a secret room and down there they found a horror. Chained to the wall was a beast. It looked like it used to be a man but had been experimented on. Like someone had sewn in animal parts to the body. It looked like someone had cut off the feet and hands and replaced them with hooves, stitched fur into the back. And the creature was gnawing on a piece of rotted flesh. And then it looked at them and the eyes had actually been plucked out and the holes threaded closed. How long had this thing been down there? At number four, we have lights out. This scene takes place right outside of a basement, so I thought it was perfect and it's also creepy, so I wanted to conclude it. Just look into that face. The eyes are ripped out of the head. You just see those black pits, it's so gross. And then it reveals the creature standing behind her. I love it. I haven't watched Lights Out in its entirety. I didn't really grab me, but this scene is definitely one of the better parts of the movie. At number three, we have a growling surprise. Now this one isn't supernatural, but trust me, it's just as frightening. You don't have to be a creature from the other side in order to make people free out. This story comes way of electrician Dave Corin. He was hired to install some cabling in a home in New Jersey. He went down to the basement and was feeding some of the cable through some of the holes he had made. And then he heard a strange noise. It sounded like a large animal growling at him. He picked up his flashlight and shined it through one of the holes that he made to feed cable through and on the other side of the hole he saw a grizzly. All that was between him and 1500 pounds of bone crushing power was a few pieces of plywood. So he did what any sensible human would do and he he ran for his life. At number one, we have a new home. A family had just purchased a new home and it seemed like it was going to be the starting of a happy new life. But it didn't take long before things started going to hell. It was a husband, wife, and their two daughters that moved into the house and it didn't matter who went into the basement, but they all felt the same strange feeling when they went down there, like something was watching them. The dad figured that the basement just needed to be spruced up a little bit. So he started doing some renovations. Late one night, he was working on the basement and he felt something strange. Not the feeling of being watched, but a feeling of terror deep in his stomach. He slowly turned and then he saw it, a tall shadowy figure. It looked as if its body was made of a black abyss. He tried to scream, but he couldn't. He tried to move, but he couldn't. He was paralyzed. He stared into the endless darkness of this thing and he saw horrors. His family murdered, his own suicide, torture, mutilation, cannibalism, and then he passed out. He woke up on the floor of the basement and then ran out. His family was all fine, but that was the last night they would spend in this house. They never went back and sometimes when the father sleeps he can see the endless blackness of this creature in his dreams. Starting us off at number 10 is the abandoned house. Now this one was shared by Maya who said there was an abandoned house near where she lived and it was a bit sus because the owner had died. Either way her and her friends would go there to drink and get high but they knew for a fact there was some kind of devil worshipping cult operating in the house. There would always be candles everywhere and even if they cleaned them up they would be there the next time they went with 
without fail. There'd also be dead cats scattered around the house, and one time they found a bloody wedding dress in the basement, surrounded by candles and pentagrams drawn on the walls. Excuse me? Does anyone want to explain? Who did they kill that was about to get married? Bloody wedding dress? Guess we'll just sweep it under the rug. At number eight, we have the spirit in the basement part one. I actually love this story, it's kind of heartwarming to me. This one was shared by Red Ezo, built by Balma Rolltide, who shared that her and her husband live in old military housing on a US Army post in Alaska. Despite their basement being creepy in general, every time they put their feet on the third last step, you could see a soldier in Vietnam era clothing hanging from the basement rafters, like his body just hanging. The user insists that he's a nice spirit, however, since he always watched over her son, who nearly died when he was 11 months old. That night, the spirit woke her up to check on the baby, but she thought it was a dream and fell back asleep. Then her dog started biting her wrist, trying to get her to wake up. He eventually succeeded and dragged her to her son's room, and they got him to the hospital just in time. He is now 12 years old, still alive, all is well. Now, at number six is the Gator. What even is this story, honestly? Back at the start of 2016, a repairman in Chicago was called to a house in the suburbs to do some repairs. He used Usually used to set up in the basement, so he did just that. And since the owners weren't in the house, they couldn't really stop him. When he ventured down there, however, he found a massive alligator, and it's not like it just randomly was there. It was their freaking pet. It would even go on walks in their backyard, which is. Actually kind of cute, I'm not gonna lie. Either way, the man reported it to the authorities ASAP and the gator was taken away from the man, which is actually quite sad. What if that man, like, raised it? and was emotionally attached. That's sad. But so is the ownership of exotic animals, so just say. Coming in at number five is the crawl space. This one's from Redditor Pawi De Hosey, who shared that growing up there was this unexplored crawl space on the other side of one of their bedroom walls. Their room also happened to be in the basement, just for some context, before you're like, uh, her bedroom? Since when? Either way, as a kid, the user used to hear the sounds of a baby crying during the night and other vague sounds, and since their house was in the woods, this was enough to really freak the user out. They used to constantly wake up their parents screaming and crying out of fear, and eventually they broke and opened up the door leading to the crawl space, and inside they found a dingy white Victorian era looking baby bassinet. Like, what the hell? Who puts their baby in a freaking crawl space? Like, are people insane? The user then got their mum to seal up the door ASAP and Thank God. At number four is Ready. Now this one honestly really made me laugh. So this eccentric ass man lived in the German suburb of Kiel and in his basement he stored sh that is straight up illegal. As a huge World War II fanatic, he was a collector of memorabilia and propaganda. And I'm not talking posters and badges and pins, no, no. This man had a full on decommissioned World War II 1943 Panzer tank. How big must your basement be that it can fit a full ass tank inside of it? Tanks are huge. And if that wasn't bad enough, he didn't just have a tank, he also had a German torpedo and cannon. Where do you even find and buy these things? He also had a bunch of other arms and the guy wasn't even quiet about it. Everyone in Kiel knew he had this stuff, and although he wasn't selling it, it's still illegal as sh to own things like a tank. And eventually the police came and raided his villa. Filling at number three slot is the mannequin. This one's from Reddit user Chonk Bonko, who said he moved to Illinois from New Jersey with his family back in 2005. The basement wasn't super creepy or anything, but it did have a mannequin in one of its closets, which he found odd. The family ended up using it as a punching bag and decided to keep it. And other than that, the basement had the user's PC in there for him to game in peace. But he admitted every time he went in there, he heard a whispering coming from behind behind him from the direction of that closet. But anytime he'd turn around, it would be nothing but the mannequin. In one instant, he opened the door to the basement and saw the mannequin had moved to the bottom of the stairs, and the only person who could have moved it was his sister, but she was fast asleep. Now, at number two is the target. This one's from Reddit user Fat Old Son, who said while working at a house in Citrus Heights, Sacramento, he found something absolutely awful. He had to go into the basement's crawl space to get a main valve and retrieve a box that was in there way at the back. When he went in there though, he found a black ski mask, some white shoelaces and rope, and some family pictures with the same person circled and crossed out in each and every one of them. And I don't want to talk shit, but I'm pretty sure someone was out to kill that crossed out person, and based on movies, I'm not wrong. Is this person still alive? 
Gotta find out. Starting us off with number 10 is the eye. Now, this one was shared by Redditor JLKanga23, who said this happened when she was 12 years old. One of her mum's friends from church asked if she and some others would come over and pray all over his house. Apparently, as soon as he moved in, things just changed. His wife's personality changed completely, he had started seeing shadows himself, and his daughter just started acting very bizarre as well. Now, their house had a storm basement that he'd never gone into because he always got an evil feeling from it. The group got to his house and the user's mum had brought her along because she was too young to be left at home. Now they opened the basement to find a bunch of ritualistic or voodoo like symbols that had been graffitied onto the walls. Already that would have been a red flag for me, I would have been like nah, B, miss me with that sh now there was one eye symbol that the user could never get out of her mind even till this day. And that wasn't even the worst part. Scattered all around the floor were dozens and dozens of dried out dead animals. I'm talking cats, rabbits, chickens, dogs, you name it, they were there. There's no way they had gotten down there themselves since there weren't any chickens in the town anyway. So someone purposely brought them there for whatever purpose. And clearly some ritualistic sh** had been going on down there. So no wonder all that bad juju infected his entire family. I get it. And at nine, the man and the girl. So the story goes that this boy, who we'll call Mike, was hanging out with his older sister and their friend Andy, who had come to visit. Andy was staying in the basement, so all the kids would hang down there and play video games. Once when they were playing, Andy heard a noise and asked if anyone else heard, to which neither Mike or his sister did. A few moments later, Andy and Mike both heard a noise which sounded like it came from a little girl. Mike's older sister dismissed his warning and said it was probably from the game. They kept playing and about 15 minutes later, they heard another sound, like a nail dragging on a bench and then falling to the ground. At this point, Mike and Andy decided to go upstairs while Mike's sister continued playing the game. Shortly after, Mike's sister came upstairs saying she heard a man's voice and it wasn't from the game. It looked like she had seen a ghost. When their dad came home, he checked it out, said it was their imagination and not to say anything to their mother because it'd scare her. He did however find the nail on the ground next to his bench by his workshop in the shed. Years later, Mike was visiting his new family home and his dad was joking about the basement in the old family home. Upon hearing the story, Mike's mother asked why she never heard the story and explained when she was home alone, she'd seen the shadows of a man and a little girl in the basement. Ooh, spooky. Nothing happened to her, but she always thought it was scary. Now at number 8 we have the dolls and honestly this one isn't even creepy because oh it was found out of nowhere and oh which psycho was behind this one. I feel like no this basement is intentionally creepy. Hanny's, a restaurant in Phoenix, Arizona has a very interesting basement that probably makes most of their customers just lose their appetites. The owners are eccentric and strange in their own regard but they installed an homage to the Last Supper in their basement. And that would have been fine had the installation not featured a bunch of creepy ass dolls. Like why? Why? If that's what I find at a restaurant, I'm automatically gonna think about the food. Like, if that's what's down there, what are they putting in my food? That I don't know of. It just creeps me out. I don't want to be there. The whole thing's just very sus. Coming in at number six now is Benjamin Franklin. No, he wasn't found in a basement, but what a plot twist that would have been if that was a story. So back in 1998, a group of construction workers were doing some repairs in the basement of the house at 36 Craven Street. It didn't take them long to find more than 1,200 pieces of human and non-human bone in a pit that was one meter wide and deep. First of all, the hell going on with that? Archaeologists were called in to investigate the site and they pinpointed the time period in which they think the bones were buried. They estimated that they had been there since the mid to late 1700s and do you know who was the resident of that house between 1756 and 1775? Founding father Benjamin Franklin. And I mean we know he wasn't a crazed serial killer murderer so um someone make it make sense. Apparently the bones are from an anatomy school that was run in the house and the surgical marks on the bones backed that story up. But wouldn't it have been much more spicy if it was Benjamin Franklin's doing and he was a serial killer? We like a bit of juice. Next up at number five, the tombstone. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I found a tombstone in my basement, I'd probably move out that same day and put my house up for sale. That's just some bad juju. Bad vibes, not here for it. So the story here is Derek Kruk was exploring his basement and stumbled upon something he hadn't noticed before on the floor. After cleaning the area and wiping the floor of the dust and whatever else was on the floor, Derek realized he had discovered a tombstone in his basement. Was the house he was living in built on top of someone's body? Could it be haunted? So many questions and I have all the answers. No. Derek called up some friends to tell them about his discovery and upon doing some digging, 
no pun intended, they soon learned the tomb belonged to Jabez Hardin, who fought in the War of 1812. However, after help from local resident Chip Mangio, who did some of his own research, it was determined that this war veteran actually wasn't buried beneath the home. Chip, who is the head of a local charitable organization that helps assist local charities, inspected every tomb at a local cemetery until he came across Hardin's. Chip went on to explain Hardin's old stone was most likely given away after his new stone was created. He went on to say, gravestones travel. You'll actually find gravestones as part of water spouts or walkways because they're still good stones and they're expensive. So at the end of the day, Derek can rest easy knowing his house wasn't built on a grave, but still knowing your house was made partly with tombstone, even if the house isn't haunted, the basement has got to be redone. Bad stuff's happening down there, I can promise you that right now. Now number four is the painting. This one's from Reddit user Fonzie 327 who said in his junior year of college he moved into a house with his best friend. They started moving their boxes into the house and put a bunch of things in the basement. Now the basement itself was basically this unfinished concrete square that contained a smaller room inside of it that had the water heater and other pipes in it. Now the boys started looking around and started checking out what's already there and they found a huge painting in the smaller room. It's about three feet tall and when they turn it around they see the creepy creepiest thing ever. The painting is of a guy wearing a pink onesie and the hood has bunny ears on it. He's holding a knife in his hand that's pointed at his own stomach, kind of like he's about to stab himself, and of course he's got the biggest smile on his face ever. Now I get art is subjective and fair enough, I don't have the right to be like that's creepy, but here's the mic drop moment we're waiting for. Now they realize the boy in the painting is being painted from the inside of the smaller room looking onto the rest of the basement. The doorway he's leaning on is exactly the same as the one in the basement and so they were like hey Hell no, we're getting out of here and they probably just broke their lease. That's what I would do, to be honest. I'm number three, the Urban Explorer. Our friend here, who we'll call Jeff, had a knack for exploring that which is now abandoned. I don't know why, but when things are abandoned, there's usually a good reason for it. And in this case, it was probably what this guy found in the basement. So the story goes, Jeff here and his pal Josh went venturing into an old abandoned farmhouse about an hour from their hometown. Rumor had it this farmhouse was once used for a cult, so you know things were gonna get weird. At first, when they walked in, Josh found a photo of the family who the two explorers believed used to live there. However, their faces in the photo were scratched out. Weird. As the two went downstairs, Jeff making his way down the old creaky wooden stairs would find himself going right down to the basement floor as the fifth step from the bottom caved in. It took a moment for Jeff to realize what had happened. He was standing in a basement with water up to his ankles as well as cuts and a ton of splinters in both legs. The agonizing pain started to spread up to Jeff's torso and he started to feel dizzy. Before he blacked out, Jeff surveyed the basement and believes he saw a face and some movement in a dark corner. Upon waking up, he found out that Josh had called 911, which was the right call. Jeff needed to be vaccinated, stitched up, and get the splinters taken out of his legs. To this day, he doesn't know what he saw in that basement, but I don't think he'll be going back anytime soon to find out. Filling on number two slot now is the comatose woman. Back in 2008, a man in Austria brought a comatose woman to a hospital. She was in critical condition, her kidney was about to shut off, and she was on the brink of death, but her ailing condition wasn't even the most worrying part about the whole thing. It was the circumstances surrounding her admittance that really worried the staff. The man who brought her in claimed he wasn't related to her and just showed up with a note from her mom telling him to bring the girl to the hospital. The girl's kidney wasn't even the only thing failing, her teeth were rotting, she was malnourished, there was a lot going on under the surface and doctors were determined to find out what was going on. They didn't know it at the time but the man was Josef Fritzl who's been mentioned on the channel many times, one of the most notorious criminals of all time. He built a chamber in his basement and after getting his daughter to help him install the door, he drew her and then locked her in there for 24 years. In this basement he raped and imprisoned his daughter multiple times, like she had seven kids while in captivity. His dumbass wife kept believing him when he told the kids were just orphans that were left at their door. Finally, one of the basement children fell ill, which is when his crimes came to light and when authorities found another secret basement he had built, but thankfully no one was in this one. And finally number one, the confinement room. Now this one really hit close to home because I had never heard of the story yet it happened when I was 17 years old and in Pickering which is about an hour away from where I grew up. So back in November of 2011, contractors working on an old abandoned home made a scary discovery in the basement. What was described as a confinement styled room with a thick door and several locks was enough to start a police investigation. Reports claim the house hadn't been lived in since 2006, but this room looked as if it had been constructed within the last year or two. Detective Darren Short explained, I can't get into what was in the room, but the way it was constructed, the time and effort put into it, and the materials used clearly indicated it was a room designed to hold somebody in. There was a locking mechanism nobody would be able to penetrate 
for breach. The previous homeowners had nothing to do with the newly constructed room, and police never did solve the curious case. So what were they trying to hide in there? What was someone trying to keep in there, really, is the more important question. Creepy. Scary. Basement I don't want to travel to, because that's a scary basement. We're starting off the list with booby traps. When Matt Feeney bought an old home in Denver, Colorado, he ended up making a pretty startling discovery. While renovating, Matt smelled what seemed to be matches being lit. He had been knocking down some of the walls and found a series of matches placed one after the other, forming kind of a fuse. The new homeowner soon discovered that the first owners of the home are the Small Doan family, a notorious crime family that was pretty infamous in the Colorado area. He also found a hidden chamber in the basement, which led to a small dugout room where many believe the crime family hid things. As to what those things were, we can only guess, but Probably nothing good. Number nine, under the stairs. A couple years ago, a redditor by the name of Perspicum posted a photo with a caption reading, the new house my parents bought has a secret room under the stairs. As cool as this is, I would probably arm myself before going down there, but yes, I definitely would. This image really invokes a lot of creepy images in my head though. Anytime there's a hidden room, there's two obvious questions that come to all our minds. One, what's down there? Of course, that's a pretty obvious one. And two, why would this room be hidden? As soon as I saw this image, I was immediately reminded of the Wes Craven movie, The People Under the Stairs. Creepy movie, creepy picture. Uh, scares all around. Mold. In 2005, Jason and Carrie Brown purchased a new home, and as they were doing renovations, they discovered a room behind a bookshelf that was kind of built into the wall and actually swung out, kind of like a door. They never knew this room existed, and inside of it, they found a note that read, hey, if you're reading this, then you found the secret room. The letter was written by the previous homeowner who went on to explain that they had moved out of the house to, due to having a mold problem and that had made their children actually sick, forcing them to move out. Of course, the new owners were pretty alarmed and ended up suing the real estate agent who sold them the home, which was definitely warranted, but I gotta say, kinda not cool for the previous owner to hide information like that in a secret room. What if they never found it? Why play games like that? You know what I'd do in this situation? I'd write that same letter and then I'd just send it in the mail. That way I'd know they'd get it instead of being like, no, they must, they must find the secret room behind the magic bookshelf in order to protect themselves from the poisonous mold. What is this guy? Like, what is he? Is it the, the Riddler or something? Just tell them that information. It's not the kind of thing you want to hide. Anyway, number seven. In a series of videos originally shared on TikTok, a young couple had just purchased a 130-year-old home before receiving a letter written by someone who had grown up in the home, referring to themselves as the last surviving member of the Madison family. The letter detailed a series of hidden rooms and compartments all throughout the house, which the couple started going on a scavenger hunt to find. Just imagine how fun that would be. First of all, just buying a house would be great, right? Then discovering you have a bunch of secret rooms all over the place? Sign me up. Anyway, the couple found a cabinet with a bunch of vintage liquor bottles, still full, mind you. There was a hidden space behind some panels in the bathroom. There had also been some antique furniture left behind, including a music box that played a decidedly eerie tune. Definitely the type of house that would be haunted if that's the sort of thing you believe in. Not something I really believe in myself, but uh, I'd probably be a little freaked out roaming around that house uh, alone at night. It kind of looks like the house uh, from uh, Hellraiser a little bit. A couple had just purchased a home in Logan, Utah. One day, they made a pretty eerie discovery. The mother had tried to move a bookcase, but discovered it was secured on. When she finally managed to move it though, it revealed a room that hadn't been mentioned in the listing for the home. I don't know why all these secret rooms are hidden behind bookshelves, but apparently that's the deal. It was this dingy room with nothing but a, a fold-out chair and ladders sitting in the middle and various objects that I can't quite make out, but it, it definitely doesn't look like a very friendly place. A lot of people have stated this kind of looked like maybe a torture room. I'd be pretty stoked to find out if there was an extra room in my house, even if it was a torture room, especially if I just bought the house. I'd, I'd be feeling like I got a bit of a deal. Even if there were 
some, you know, missing folks in the neighborhood that met their end in said room. Got to make the best of everything in life, right? I'd, I'd make good use of it. Throw out the old chair, first of all. Just get rid of anything in that room. Who knows who sat on that thing. And then uh, put up some lights in there. Have a hidden party room or something. Number five, stroller. Five years ago, a Redditor named JK Main shared a photo of what they saw when they opened up their attic for the first time. Simply writing, I should never have opened the attic. All you see is a dark, cramped attic space with nothing but this lonely old stroller. So sure, this is what happened. Someone had a stroller, baby grew up, they didn't need it anymore, into the attic, it goes. The stroller, not the baby, but. Then again, we uh, don't have any more pictures, so maybe there was a little skeleton in that stroller. We'll never, we'll never know. There's something about attics and basements that just creeps us all out though, doesn't it? And it's hard not to look at this image without feeling a little pang of uneasiness. It's an old timey looking stroller too that really reminds me of something you'd see in an old gothic horror movie or something. And you also can't help but wonder what is in that stroller. Probably nothing, but I mean, eh, you know, you never know. Imagine seeing this in your attic and then one night you're lying in bed and you hear the sound of squeaky wheels slowly rolling about above the ceiling accompanied by the faint sound of a child's laughter. Number four, bunker bugs. A Redditor by the name of Colombian Thunder posted an image captioned, found out the house we are living in has a bunker below. I managed to squeeze my phone in one of the cracks of the door to take this creepy picture. And this is what his phone captured. So yeah, pretty vomit inducing. This picture is just a, a nice reminder that despite how critter free we try to make our living spaces, as much as we try to forget that they even exist, it's all just an illusion, baby. There are thousands and thousands of insects all around us at all times. Just too many insects and we all know it. We just don't like thinking about it. Imagine going to bed at night knowing all these crickets are scuttling around under you. I actually kind of like crickets generally. I think they're oddly cute in a way, but these look like a, like a different kind of cricket. They almost look like a, a cross between a spider and a cricket. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure some, some bug or insect fanatic knows exactly what these are, but just the sheer amount of them too. I mean, just stare at this image and try not to squirm a little bit. You can almost feel them crawling under your skin. Number three, the bed. This next story comes to us from Steven and Carolyn Sparks, who found a secret room behind the bathroom wall in the basement of their recently purchased home in East Sussex. And it looks like a, it looks like a room you'd, you'd see in a Saw movie. It's terrifying, just real nasty looking. In this dingy room, they discover nothing but a pile of boxes in the corner and this incredibly uh, comfortable looking iron bed frame. What a, what a cozy looking room. It must've been nice for Steven to know. He got into a bad argument with his wife one night. He could just pop down to the basement and curl up there for the night. The bed takes up a, the whole width of the room, so it does not look comfortable at all. I was being sarcastic in case you didn't realize. This would be uh, just a claustrophobic nightmare as to what went on in this room. Who knows? Like I said, the, the room was hidden behind the wall eh, in their basement bathroom, so I don't know. I, I don't think anything was good happening back there. I'm imagining someone uh, was in that room who didn't want to be, though, because look at it. Who in their right mind would want to be there? T t duct tape as many Pixar movie posters and there as you want. Try and make it as friendly and inviting as possible. This place still looks like a scene at a hostel. So moving on. Number two, Ohio. Oh boy. Yeah, this one comes to us from Ohio, the land of the strange. Students of Ohio State University renting a home just off campus had started joking around with each other that there was a ghost in their home when they began discovering some of their cupboards and even their microwave and oven were being left open. One day they decided to explore their basement where they happened to cross a locked door, a door which they had believed led to a simple utility closet. But once they opened it, they discovered something much worse than junk. It was a room full of someone's stuff. A surprise roommate, if you will, which is never a pleasant surprise. I think most of us like knowing exactly how many and who our roommates are, but that's just me, maybe. Found frame photos, textbooks, a bed, whole nine yards. A guy was living there. Apparently he didn't turn out to be dangerous, but uh, it looks to me 
like you didn't turn out to be all that smart either. If you're, if you're gonna be squatting in someone else's home, take notes here. Maybe, and this is just my opinion, but you might wanna close the cupboards when you're done rooting through them. And the microwave too, you can't even close the microwave? Are you an animal? Yeah, anyway, it just helps prevent suspicion when you leave things the way you found them, you know? And coming in at number one is Crawl Space. In 2014, a fellow on Reddit going by the name of Lumberjack found a mysterious crawl space in the basement of his new home, which contains some pretty harrowing stuff. It all started when he found a movable panel in his basement. When he opened it up, he found a crawl space, and in that crawl space was a black door sealed with a combination lock. One of the strangest things about this door was that it had an air vent on it, as if it had been made to keep someone trapped inside. When Lumberjack finally managed to get the lock open, he discovered a small soundproof room lined with plastic sheeting. He also found a briefcase and a safe. Inside of the safe, he found several VHS tapes. A message was also written on the inside lid of the safe. It simply read, do not. That was it. Lumberjack went to the police with all of this and was apparently told to take down the pictures he shared on Reddit. We also don't know what was on those tapes till this very day, and maybe it's better that we don't. Starting our list off at number 10, the Stranahan House. Okay, you don't wanna be stranded at the Stranahan House, that's for sure. Fort Lauderdale, it has a few haunted hidden gems, apparently, it's always, always Florida, always something going on over there. The oldest house just happens to be the most haunted. What do you know? I could have guessed that, that's for sure. The house's OG owner was that of Frank Stranahan. And today, if you visit ye old stomping grounds, well, you might actually catch a photo of Frank himself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's said that he still oversees the place as a ghost. He regularly shows up and guests photos, so I don't know, maybe he likes the attention. Maybe he likes photo bombing. I'm not sure. I suppose being trapped in the same house for all of eternity gets a little boring. I mean, sure, fair. Ivy Stranahan, Frank's late wife, well, she's also made an appearance or two. Yeah, true love is haunting the same house together. That's really it. Guests have felt a cold hand on their shoulder and her perfume still lingers in the hallways. So must have been some good strong stuff. That's for sure. Now it's not all fun and games with the uh, phantom family members. Augustus Stranahan, Frank's father, well his ghost, he likes to throw books from time to time over in the library. So let's avoid that library, shall we? Let's do it. Next, number nine, the Tampa Theater. If you're a theater kid, you're gonna love this one. You're gonna be singing West Side Story tunes in no time. Tampa Theater opened back in 1926. Today, the theater is said to be haunted by a woman that was struck and sadly her life was taken by a carriage on the property. By a carriage, what a sad, slow way to go. This was actually before the theater was built, keep that in mind. So her spirit had been there for a while and then it was built and then immediately it's haunted. The janitors are like, what? It's been one day, how is this possibly haunted? If you go to Tampa Theater today, you might catch a glimpse of a woman in a white gown walking across the mezzanine hallway. Imagine telling somebody to sit down during a show and then they just disappear, you're like, Okay, that works just as well. That's great, thank you. Tampa Theater, of course, has leaned into these claims. Now they offer the Ghosts of Tampa Theater Tour, of course, where you can line up and pay money to you know, go and get spooked, I guess. Now, guests can learn about its haunted history and it's fun, but still, would you go? Would you pay money to go somewhere that's knowingly haunted? I wouldn't. Definitely not. Sound off below, would you? The comments are like, yeah, I would. Gary Sinise, Gary Sinise. I'd definitely go. What have I done? Number eight, the Biltmore Florida Hotel. Again, it's always Florida. What's going on over there? Another room to avoid at all costs. This time it's the entire property. Let's just turn right instead of left. First of all, do you like staying at a hotel? Some people love it. Some people find it relaxing. I can't sleep at all. I always get sick for some reason. I like get the shivers. I don't know. Maybe I'm staying in all the haunted hotels. Must be me. The Biltmore Hotel in the city of Coral Gables is one of the most haunted hotels ever. It all started back in 1926 during initial construction. The Biltmore witnessed a foul killing on the 13th floor. Again, during construction, these things are always doomed. The Biltmore also turned into a military hotel during World War II, and then it was closed afterwards and ultimately abandoned later in 1968. So yeah, tons of ghosts walking down those hallways. The city renovated the hotel back in the 1980s, but again, didn't take long for ghost stories to spread. Of course, the most activity is on the 13th floor. So if you check this one out, really double down, you know, really go for it and stay a night at the 13th floor. I can't believe some buildings don't have a 13th floor. Well, they do, but everyone wants to pretend like they don't. You know what I mean? We all know. Going up that staircase, you're counting, you're like, oh, they lied. Number seven, Whaley House. Located in San Diego and built in 1857. The Whaley House is an example of why you don't build your house on cursed lands. Yeah, let's go 
to the next plot over. This, this one seems a little occupied. A little Elden Rings action going on here. The site that this family's home was built on was also the location of San Diego's first ever public gallows. Ah, nice. What a fun fact that is. Let's move in. And apparently, right after moving in, Thomas Whaley said he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, who had lost his life in the same gallows only four years prior. That's terrifying. How do you not know? Four years ago? Come on. After the family had settled, they had all began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, most of which actually happened inside the house. Inside the house. Hence the cursed land aspect, right? Now we're kind of putting it together. As of today, the Whaley house is a museum and apparently the family members continue to haunt that said museum. So sadly you can't live there anymore or sleep there, but you have to pay a little pretty penny and go and take a look and take a sniff. I don't know why I said take a sniff, but sure, some people like to smell old history. Why not? Number six, British Museum's adult room. All right, get those uh, kids out of here for this one. Set them to bed. Put on your peep and tom glasses for this one. I don't know, that's weird. The British Museum, they have a long, long, very long adult themed room, and it's exactly what you think. The museum itself dates back to the mid 1700s, right? So since its initial opening, the museum only let 10 people in at a time. You know, it's like, hey, too much content in here, too much scandal content for that that many eyes one at a time everyone's sweating getting all weird now of course it holds many more every day but some parts of this collection not everybody can handle for example in the Victorian era the museum had a secret room for obscene objects or objects that are deemed perverse things that you know the public can't really see without a warning there's a part of a temple wall that shows the dirty deed itself there's a big painting of you know just some Weird movements with people. Everyone's all wet. It's, it's intimate. Intimate ancient yoga right there. Hide their eyes. In the same collection, there also includes a Roman terracotta lamp that depicts a naked woman on a crocodile. Ooh, where should we put that lamp? Maybe the living room. The Cabinet of Obscene Objects. Sounds like a Harry Potter book, doesn't it? That's fascinating. You know what? I lied. Check this room out. Don't avoid this one. Let's go peep your heads in. Number five, flesh eating beetle room. Ugh, if you don't like bugs, you're gonna hate this one. Sorry, Jen, if you're watching, this is ugh, it's gonna suck. Enough about ancient butts and ancient, you know, yoga, hot yoga. Let's move on to some of the weird stuff, shall we? For example, in Chicago's Field Museum, this one is full of secret rooms. One's really disgusting. One of these rooms, you'll never catch me in, that's for sure. The flesh-eating beetle room. Do I have to say anything more? I don't know. Can you imagine this exhibit on a field trip? I would throw up immediately. I'd have to call my parents at like 10.51 a.m. The Field Museum uses hide beetles to clean its specimens. Yeah, so they're alive. Real, real beetles are in there, working. Nine to five in there. Yeah, in order to get each of these carcasses ready for showtime, these beetles are on the clock. They're business oriented. In just a few hours, a small rodent can be completely cleaned. Right down to the bone, gone. Like me after I eat wings, just nothing left, just a corpse. Imagine this is where Peter Parker got his powers. Ew, so gross. Number four, the secret insect room. Ugh, more? Come on. If you're at Liverpool and for some reason that last one you enjoyed, well, here we go, there's more bug rooms. Here we go, drive the tea for you. Inside the World Museum in Liverpool lies a secret room and inside it contains around a million insects. Now, this time they're dead, but it's still pretty bad. I met you just thinking about this one. This collection began back in 1855. The 13th Earl of Derby, not the 12th, the 13th Earl of Derby, he's like, you know what I need? A cupboard full of shiny bugs. That's what we should focus on instead of you know, feeding people that don't have food. So now, thousands of specimens hide in this room, including the world's largest beetle and the world's largest moth. Again, disgusting. Imagine night at the museum, but it takes place in this one. Ugh. Ben Stiller's like, yeah, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it rated R. Number three, room 206. Yeah, this one gives Stephen King's 1408 vibes. You're gonna absolutely love it. I'm not sure you're ready, honestly. Next time you visit, you guessed it, Florida, make sure that you read every customer review before you check into every hotel, okay? Room 206 at the Super on International Drive. Apparently, it's super haunted. Yeah, you wanna super avoid this one. I don't know, I tried three there, it didn't work. Guess I've reported the bed shaking in the middle of the night, which is not great for trying to get your beauty sleep. And they've also reported freezing cold air, even though the AC was not turned on. Maybe that's why I was shivering this whole time. Oh God. And the worst of all, guests have seen their bed look as if somebody was just laying there, like, you know, indents, even though it's perfectly made before checking in. That's terrifying. Can ghost squat? We've got a couple of ghost squatters in our room. We gotta change rooms. Number two, King Tut's belongings. The new Grand Egyptian Museum finally opened to the public back in 2021. And while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, all of King Tut's artifacts will be on display. See, prior to this museum being open, Opened, we only saw about 150 artifacts from his tomb and they all went on tour, you know, like a band. They just went around 
around the world and just haunted different locations with old ancient Egyptian curses. But now this museum will stay in one place. Now it will house thousands of artifacts in a beautiful space that pans over 7,000 square meters. It's massive. Now cut back to the initial discovery of King Tut's tomb, November 4th, 1922. Ancient history was unearthed. A team of researchers led by British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered this entrance to King Tut's tomb and it was fascinating. They found history right there. Literally the front steps. They're like, hey, let's go in. Why not? What'll happen? Only three weeks later, King Tut's actual tomb was unearthed and history hasn't been disturbed in over 3,000 years. Then we came in and made him an exhibit. Now he's just, there's all stuff. There we go. This discovery spawned the curse of the pharaohs. You've probably heard of this. Because almost every expert involved in the initial discovery, they all experienced horrible luck. Howard Carter, the archaeologist who discovered the tomb, he gave a paperweight to his friend Bruce Ingham as a gift. Now that paperweight in question was a mummified hand wearing a bracelet. Why you'd give that to anybody as a gift, let alone a paperweight, is beyond me. Inscribed on that bracelet read the phrase, Cursed be he who moves my body. Ingham's house, believe it or not, burned to the ground not long after receiving that gift. Ah, who could have predicted that one? And then when he tried to rebuild the home, it was destroyed again in a flood. Yeah, talk about bad luck. That's why you don't steal cursed things. And finally, number one, St. Augustine's Lighthouse. The St. Augustine Lighthouse is located in Florida and was built between 1871 and 1874 and was considered Florida's first official lighthouse. Before then, everybody was like, oh, I can't see. And since then, there have been several tragic events over the following years, but even during initial construction, there were several freak accidents on site that lead many to believe that it's haunted today. Today, said spirits are still lurking about. Sightings of shadowy figures are common, but one time, somebody saw a hand come through the tower door, like a floaty hand, like from idle hands. How terrifying is that? Can you imagine? That's horrible. Several guests have also reported furniture <laughs> moving around on its own. One person even said that they had some of their arm hairs plucked off while in the basement, which is a little personal if you ask me, honestly. Another guest even felt someone grab their ankle at one point while walking down a hallway, which actually caused them to trip and fall. That's terrifying. Imagine looking down and seeing nobody. <laughs> Getting chills thinking about that. <laughs> 